This video is brought to you by Banks. This is me at 8 a.m. in the morning on what I call a normal Wednesday. I have a lot of work to get ready for, but at that very moment, I feel a jolt of excitement as I've discovered something called photo ambient wallpaper, a feature buried inside the S24 Ultra's advanced settings under labs. This AI trickery changes the wallpapers based on the time and weather conditions, and I can't make up my mind about which one of my wallpapers to apply first. As I finish my coffee and prepare to head to the studio, I take some time to respond to comments and admire how much of a pleasure it is to type on the 6.8 inch flat screen display. The built-in AI keyboard features are really something I can get used to and come in very handy for moments before my first coffee. Once done, as a two phone person, I put my iPhone 15 Pro in my sling, which hopefully sheds some light on my watch of choice, and then shoehorn the Ultra into my pocket to head out. As I get in my car, a procrastination itch gives me a sudden desire to head to my local electronics retailer to purchase last year's top-rated Samsung OLED TV since the new studio is in desperate need of a decent television set. While researching the location that might have my TV in stock, I can't get enough of the custom keyboard I enabled with the help of good luck. The app in question is Samsung's keyboard tinkering tool called Keys Cafe. While typing, I witness a cocktail of subtle vibrations, cool animations, and typewriter sound effects automatically making any other software keyboard look and sound utterly boring. So on the way to my shopping destination, I remembered there was a recent One UI update and found yet another reason to procrastinate by stopping by some places and snapping photos to experiment with later with the hopes of finding out how the built-in Galaxy AI photo features might have improved. See, since the release of the phone, I haven't found much of a reason to use any of the generative AI wizardry aside from fixing the occasional horizon which most often works great. Since there was a backlash, post Samsung announcing adding a paywall to those AI features come 2025, I keep wondering if all this AI will be something I might have to, you know, budget for. Yo, I'm actually starving. You wanna grab a bike? Honestly, 15 minutes into my object relocation attempts, I feel perplexed at the real use case of those features. On the contrary, something that I already find myself using a lot is scanning documents, which I enabled under the camera settings of the S24 alongside auto scan and the ability to remove unwanted objects. Thumb be gone. By now, all this AI magic should be available on previous generation S23 owners, so if you're one of those people who puts Galaxy AI to good use, Share with me in the comments how you do that. And while at it, subscribe to the channel because why not? While waiting for the store clerk to double check my order and fill out the warranty card, I can't stop thinking about what a bliss navigating the improved One UI is, especially on this giant display. I did speed up my animations to 0.5 to make everything twice as quick, which gives this powerhouse of a phone absolute justice. In case you're wondering, this can be done by enabling the developer menu. This happens by going to About Phone, Software and Information and tapping 7 times on the build number. Heading back to the last option on the main settings screen will reveal those developer options. Now with a massive screen like this, I had no choice but to enable the bottom swipe gesture for one-handed use, which comes in handy more than once a day. As with most of the goodies, this is something that can be found under the advanced features alongside something that I got used to around the iPhone, which is under motions and gestures. I'm talking about lift to wake. For those wondering, just like last year, I picked the 512GB version of the S24 Ultra in black as I somehow find 
most other color choices a bit dull. The only exception will be the titanium grey, but it made no sense to me to get a similar color to my iPhone 15 Pro. If I put them side by side with the iPhone and you ask me to choose a device based on looks and the color alone, I'd pick the Stealth Ultra any day as it looks supreme. The only competitor to its looks in terms of better balance in my opinion would be the regular S24 again in black. In the hand it feels very liberating compared to the vastness of the Ultra, but it ain't no Ultra. Now as much as I enjoy the Batman vibes here, I wouldn't rock this massive foam naked. And to complement the looks and sleekness of it, I've paired it with Banks Armor Pro Kevlar case, which is built with 600D Dupont Kevlar fiber, offering robust protection in a sleek package. The TPU soft buttons are very clicky and are a pleasure to press. Since I am surrounded by MagSafe accessories, I really appreciate the built-in MagSafe compatible system, which is also present on the lighter Banks case, the Armor air. The second case is super thin and lightweight featuring a metal lens frame like the Armor Pro but with button cutouts instead. For the ultimate peace of mind, Banks also offers sapphire lens protectors as well as a glass warrior screen protector which works flawlessly with the sensitive fingerprint unlocking. The screen protector offers reinforced edges and it is resistant to fingerprints. So why not take advantage of Banks special offer for 20% off site-wide and use discount code EPIX by following the very first link in the description bubble. Side note. Given my location and carrier restrictions for now, my primary phone remains the iPhone simply because of iMessage and iCloud, where the S24 Ultra holds a duplicate SIM. If I were to look at my screen time, however, it becomes clear which phone should be considered secondary. I'm saying all this because I'm trying to transition out of my beloved iCloud and hop over to Google Drive and Google One just so I can untie the shackles a little bit more and make my dual phone life more manageable. With that in mind, I recently discovered that iCloud photos can be migrated to Google with an option to request a transfer directly from iCloud. That means that my entire 500GB plus gallery can be copied over by going to privacy.apple.com and choosing transfer a copy of your data. I shall report on how it works soon, so stay tuned. As I mentioned earlier, around February 22nd, Samsung released a long requested One UI update featuring bug fixes and most importantly addressing the complaints of the device being less, you know, vibrant or vivid, to be precise. I'm pointing this out as my first impressions video of the Ultra was questioned as to why I never talked about this quote-unquote vivid issue. See, my previous Android was the OnePlus Open alongside the iPhone 15 Pro, the experience of which led to witnessing the screen of the Ultra seemingly perfect. Sure, it wasn't as vibrant and punchy as I remembered it on the S23, but still great looking and pleasant to work with regardless. With the latest software upgrade, I can now make the screen more vivid and Samsung-ly like, which is great, yet I still prefer to keep, you know, things true to life on my side. This OLED TV is really something to cherish, just like the 6.8 inch on the Ultra. If I'm to nitpick with the Ultra's display right now, it is only in the software department as I find auto brightness a bit cumbersome. It is always too dark for my liking, especially during low light situations where I end up cranking things up manually and quite often. But when it comes to the opposite, using the S24 outside, it is absolutely spectacular. With over 2500 nits of brightness, this phone gives the sun a fair fight and paired with the anti-glare display which I raved last time about, it establishes the Ultra as the absolute king in the display department. Things are no different when it comes to the versatility of the cameras of the Ultra also. In my last Sunday's newsletter, I announced that we are finally starting to abide to a fixed timetable posting a new video each Saturday and two shorts each week. With that being said, we planned for a short about arguably the best USB-C cable out there and the S24 Ultra is the tool to use in this case for a few reasons. It's by Hexcal, which are the awesome people behind the Hexcal Studio workstation I featured last time. And what makes it special, aside from being high-end and braided, when it comes to shorts and shooting vertically, a smartphone works best and this phone with its upgraded camera system specifically 4K at 120 frames per second and the power to shoot natively with versatile lenses like 
3x and 5x is the way to go. When I switched from the Galaxy Fold 5 to the OnePlus Open late last year, I was ecstatic about the hardware marvel OnePlus have created, but that very same day, I realized I'll be missing Samsung's One UI when it comes to apps as well, especially the My Files app, which out of all Android devices I've tried is the closest to a full-scale files app on a mobile device. Now that I'm back on One UI, I am thrilled to manage my work truly professionally and even skip airdrop transfers with the ability to connect to my local NAS directly. Something that I'm doing right now, dumping over the shots we did with the S24 directly. The dynamic quartet of the massive screen, powerful apps, the S Pen and Samsung software, specifically things like the side panels, make this phone the ultimate one for many. An example that I miss on every other phone out there is the side clipboard panel. Being able to access previously copied items to then paste them accordingly in a pinch is a huge time saver and really an experience that makes this phone a productivity beast. This is more of a Samsung thing rather than just Android as my OnePlus Open, for example, can't really flex with a side panel like this, even if it tries. The regular S24, for example, also features this awesome Samsung side panel, but its screen real estate falls short when we talk about multitasking and split view, and let's not forget, no S Pen. Talking about professional use, DeX doesn't disappoint one bit either, no matter if I use it wirelessly or plugged in. As far as I know, it has experienced a bigger overhaul on the Samsung tablet side of things, but even on the phones, it is a tool worth having at my disposal. And I'll give you an example. Last week, when we were prepping my desk setup video, I had all my devices anchored to my desk for shooting purposes. While everyone else was busy grabbing juicy shots, I needed to prep some scripts as well as do some admin work. And guess what? Enter Dex. Now that we've shot the short and the team is ready to put it together, I can sit down and power up Dex to prep for the next project. So don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E. Over and out.